Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have been getting a lot of suggestions and requests to update my multi-threaded Namesh query based path finding system added a while ago to the new DOTS 1.0 version. In this video, I'll be discussing my implementation and I'll also try and realize dynamic obstacle avoidance behavior. I'll start with spawn a system that spawns entities in grid pattern. With padding and offset taken into account, I can easily spawn any number of entities anywhere I want. The relative to spawner option simply spawns entities relative to spawner's location. I also don't want to spawn all entities at once, that's why the duration between spawns come in, allowing me to specify how much time elapses between each spawn, thereby preventing those FPS drops. And the max cycles option ensures that the system doesn't spawn the grid more than the specified maximum limit. The spawner bundle consists of an authoring script, a system, and an aspect. The authoring script captures the necessary input and initializes them if needed. I like to keep closely bound components data together and bake them in one go, but you can split it if you want to. The system operates on entities with spawner component and calls a spawn job where I actually spawn the grid of entities. The logic to spawn a grid is just looping over the grid and positioning the entity while considering padding and offsets. One of the fundamental abilities an agent may require is the capability to move from one designated location to the other. To achieve this, the agent possesses an agent movement component along with a buffer element attached to it. The concept here is to populate the buffer with waypoints, which includes the agent's current position and the desired destination we set. The core logic behind moving the agent is to continuously update the position and rotation over time. By populating the agent's buffer with the current position and the destination position, I enable the agent to navigate towards the designated location, taking into account the specified agent speed and rotation speed. Furthermore, if I want the agent to retrace its path back to its original starting position, I can simply set the retrace path flag to true, allowing the agent to move to its initial starting position. I toggle the reached flag within the agent component to tell the system that the agent has reached its current destination or waypoint. I do this by specifying a minimum distance between the agent's current location and the next waypoint as indicated by the white sphere. If the agent happens to end up in this sphere, I consider the agent to have reached its current destination and move on to the next waypoint. In this case, I only have two locations in the buffer so the agent starts traveling back to its initial location. To ensure global applicability and easy management of various settings such as pathfinding units, path retracing, agent movement and other related values, I have introduced the entity in Namesh Global Properties. This entity serves as a singleton meaning there will be only one instance of it. One important value within the Namesh Global Properties is the maximum distance referred to as X tends from the point where Namesh can be found. This distance is crucial for Namesh query to return a valid Namesh position and generate accurate waypoints during the pathfinding job. Speaking of pathfinding, I already have a job in place that takes the from and to locations along with the Namesh query as inputs. Each entity has its own separate instance of Namesh query. In the updated version, I have added an additional step to ensure that the waypoints added to the buffer are valid locations. This involves making some modification to the path utils script as well. When the navigation system calls this job, the generated waypoints are dumped into the corresponding buffer of the entity. This provides the movement script with complete path to traverse through. Another significant change is that fresh path is always calculated once an agent reaches its current destination. This can be observed in different waypoints used to traverse back to the agent's initial position compared to the path taken while traveling towards the current destination. In this implementation, the concept of caching the path has been completely omitted. To achieve dynamic obstacle avoidance behavior, I have implemented a path validity job that is triggered after the path finding job in the agent and navigation system. The path finding job handles static path finding, while the path validity job checks the validity of the current path stored in the agent's buffer. If the path is deemed invalid, the path calculated flag on the agent is set to false and the buffer is cleared, prompting the recalculation of the path. Let me focus on the agent's current path, specifically the first waypoint to understand how system verifies this path validity. 
The first waypoint is highlighted in the green sphere. To check if the path is obstructed, I generate a waypoint in front of the agent at a specified distance represented by a yellow sphere. I then cast a Namish ray from that point to the current waypoint. This Namish ray cast differs from the physics ray cast as it traces on the Namish. If the ray from the yellow sphere to the green one encounters no obstructions, the Namish hit point returns the position of the current waypoint, that is the position of the green sphere. This indicates that the path is still valid. However, if the hit point does not correspond to the current waypoint, it suggests that the path has become obstructed and may require recalculation. To signal this, I set a path invalid flag to true in another buffer dedicated to checking path validity that is attached to the agent. The system now automatically initiates recalculation of an alternative path and populates the agent's buffer with the new waypoint for traversal. This ensures that the agent can navigate around dynamic obstacles and continue along its path. While the current obstacle avoidance implementation may have limitations, such as agents stopping when they are in the area without damage, there are trade-offs involved in tuning the agent's behavior based on level design. It is important to consider various variables that impact the agent's movement and find balance between aggressive obstacle avoidance and maintaining precision. If the agent tries to avoid obstacle too close to them, it can lead to jittery movement due to limited time available for path recalculation. Using a physics ray cast could provide a more robust solution, but it may not carve out the Namish if the obstacles are represented as entities. In such cases, constantly representing entity data in game object world just for obstacle avoidance may not be ideal. However, it is possible to combine the physics ray cast with Namish ray cast by registering a hit with physics ray cast and then calculating an alternative path using Namish ray cast to navigate around the obstacles. There are certainly other ways to improve the system, such as checking the validity of the entire path instead of focusing solely on the local avoidance. This would involve more frequent path calculation but could enhance overall robustness of the navigation system. It is important to assess specific use cases and level designs to determine if further improvements are needed. Until I have a specific use case and a level where this system needs some improvement, I don't think I would be coming back to altering this implementation. I would rather have this as a library that I could use when I need some sort of navigation. But for now, I am glad it worked and I hope some of you might find it useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Until then, have fun.